Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Duet Night Abyss. Gonna start by optimizing Windows, and after that, we're gonna take a look on your NVIDIA and Radiant Pyramider, and at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're gonna start by writing settings, and we're gonna go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is Game Bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue, and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that another thing uh, i want to mention is some recommendations so make sure that your uh, xmp profile is activated if you have it on your bios super important Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your cpu if you have an amd or intel also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So for NVIDIA, first of all, make sure that you have the latest version of NVIDIA app and also the driver. We're going to go to the graphics section in the global setting. Normally, I always recommend to use the latest version of DLSS over there. So make sure that you're using less latest everywhere. So you're going to make sure that your frame gen, ray reconstruction and DLSS using the latest one. Make sure the low latency mode is at on. And also, I like to put my shader cache size because I have the disk space at 100 because I install a lot of different game on my PC. By default, you only have 5 gigs. So if you have more than 15 game on your uh, uh, computer, make sure that you use 10 or even 100 if you have the space. In the system section, I recommend to go with G-Sync on. So make sure this one is that full screen and window. Window will cover also your borderless. Make sure that you're selecting the proper monitor. And also make sure that you're selecting the native resolution and the IS refresh rate possible on your monitor. In the color section, I recommend to you maybe use the digital vibrance at 55. Just add five a little bit, five percent more. Uh, the saturation will be a little bit better. Color or more vibrant, so I like to do that. But it's question of preference. That's about it for Nvidia. Now let's go with Radian. So now for Radian card, we're gonna go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your FreeSync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're gonna go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1. This one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. 
Ready and chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now, inside of the game. So for quality preset, I recommend to just go with custom. Graphic filter, no impact on your FPS, so just select the one that you prefer. I like to go with the professional one. Display mode, go with borderless window. If you have an RTX card, definitely go with DLSS at quality. You can expect a nice 10% boost, and honestly, your quality will be very nice, the image quality. Frame gen, I'm not a huge fan of it in the game. You kind of feel the input lag, so that's why I just deactivate it. If you have a 4060 and you're struggling to run the FPS, maybe test it out, but I'm not a fan. Frame rate, I just do unlimited. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with average or even low if you need more FPS. You can expect 4% boost over there. Visual effect quality, go with low. Uh, after low, you see some drop in your FPS, so that's why I recommend this parameter. For VSync, I don't recommend to use it. It will add input lag in your game, so use FreeSync or G-Sync if it's available to you. Crowd density, I recommend average or even low if you're struggling with your FPS. The anti-aliasing, you can stay at Filmic SMAA. Anyway, if you're using DLSS, this one will not apply. Texture quality, I recommend extreme if you have 8GB and more VRAM, 6GB at high, 4GB at average, 3GB at low, and less than 3GB go with extremely low. Local wind field detail, this one deactivated. You can expect a nice 3% boost in your FPS. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Duet Night Abyss guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.